Some of the more common disorders are going to include verruca or warts. Now, warts are going to be soft, tan-colored, cauliflower-looking lesions. The actual histology is normally going to be epidermal hyperplasia. There's some hyperkeratosis. And there's going to be some coilocytosis. And coilocytosis just means evacuated cells. So they get these large amounts of sort of empty-looking cytoplasm. You can see these very well on a pap smear, for example. And so whenever you have these, you're thinking about common warts. These are usually caused by HPV, or human papillomavirus. And if they're on the genitals, we call them condyloma acuminatum, or genital warts. Again, also caused by HPV. Next, we have a nevus. And a nevus is just the scientific word for a mole. And there are several types that might show up on step one. Most common would just be a nevocellular nevus. And a nevocellular nevus is just a common benign mole that many of us have. Next, we have urticaria, which is also known as common hives. And these are these intensely pruritic wheels that show up on the skin, usually in the setting of an allergic reaction, secondary to mast cell degranulation and release of histamine. Atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, is a pruritic eruption commonly seen on the flexures of the skin. So you may see it on the flexures of the elbow or of the knees, two very common places for eczema. This is usually associated with other atopic disorders, including asthma or other common allergies. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type four hypersensitivity reaction, meaning it's T cell mediated. This usually is poison ivy. Some people are allergic to nickel and various other substances can cause and allergic contact dermatitis. And we further group this into acute contact dermatitis or a chronic contact dermatitis. The difference being in acute contact dermatitis, such as poison ivy, you're usually going to see ulcers and vesicles. Whereas in a chronic dermatitis, you're going to see more of a thickening or chronic lichenification, as we call it. Next, we have psoriasis. And psoriasis is an autoimmune condition that causes papules and plaques with a very characteristic silvery scaling. So whenever you see this term silvery scaling on step one, you really want to be thinking about psoriasis. Now, what's going on in the histology here in terms of psoriasis is that you get nuclei that are still present in the stratum corneum. Okay, so as we said before, that's very characteristic of psoriasis. When you actually do see nuclei in the stratum corneum where there's not supposed to be nucleated cells. In addition, you're going to see some acanthosis, you're going to see parakeratotic scaling, and you're going to see an increase in the stratum spinosum layer and a decrease in the stratum granulosum layer. So those are the basic histological patterns seen in psoriasis. In terms of when you actually see the patient, if you try to scrape in one of these lesions, you'll actually get some bleeding, and we call that a positive auspitz sign. When you have that, again, very characteristic of psoriasis. So just to review the histology once more, you're going to have acanthosis with parakeratotic scaling, and all that means is that the nuclei are still present in the corneum layer of the epithelium. The stratum corneum still has nuclei in it. You're going to see an increase in stratum spinosum layer cells and a decrease in stratum granulosum layer cells. Sometimes psoriasis is also associated with arthritis, as well as nail pitting. So you'll actually see little indentations in the nail beds of these patients. Next, we have seborrheic keratosis, and these are flat, greasy, pigmented lesions that are basically just epithelial proliferation with large amounts of keratin-filled cysts. And these are very common in the elderly, and they have a very characteristic looking appearance. They sort of have this brownish, scaly, pasted on looking appearance. It almost looks like it's not real, that someone just took a little brown circle and pasted it on the patient's skin. Most of us have seen these before, and they are called seborrheic keratosis. They usually occur in the head or the trunk, and they are very common, again, in older people. These are benign. 